Allow me to regale you with a little anecdote. I was on a night out in Edinburgh a few months back, waiting for a taxi that I could bail out of, when I happened to spot a drunk guy eating a kebab nearby. And I'm talking really drunk, like his eyes were pointing in different directions, and there was a suspiciously large stain around the crotch of his jeans. Then he lost his grip on his takeaway prize, and it fell all over the road beside him. But without missing a beat, he bent down to pick up the meaty debris, and promptly face planted, only to stagger to his feet and try again. It was a pitiful sight and I probably should have turned away, and yet I couldn't help but stare in horrified fascination at the ridiculous and embarrassing disaster playing out in front of me. Which brings me neatly along to Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. It turns out a new trailer got released today, and since the entire internet seems to be making reaction videos, it seemed only fair to add my drunken perspective to the mix. But mine is the only one you should listen to. The trailer begins with an extended montage, and by extended, I mean it takes up more than half the entire runtime of iconic scenes and characters from the original trilogy, and it plays out like the memorial reel from the Oscars because most of those involved have been killed off by now. Thanks, Disney. Now I have to admit, this kind of stuff got the nostalgia going pretty hard. Remember when Star Wars movies were actually good? Remember when they told fresh and exciting stories, featuring interesting characters with compelling story arcs, played by actors with actual charisma and screen presence? Remember when romance between men and women was still allowed to happen? Remember when seeing a Star Wars movie was a magical experience that stirred feelings of wonder and epic adventure and opened your eyes to a whole world of infinite possibilities. Well, forget about that, because it's time to talk about Disney Star Wars in this trailer, which finally trundles out after more than a minute of nostalgia baiting. So it opens up with a plank of wood walking through the desert with her two mates, who are so deeply entrenched in the friend zone, they're gonna need ice axes and repelling gear to get out. Why does Poe look like Nathan Drake all of a sudden? So it looks like they've rocked up to an outdoor music festival. There's kites and fireworks and all kinds of nice thing going on. Excellent, that's exactly where I'd head during a galactic civil war. Then there's a shot of Carrie Fisher to remind us that Leia is still alive. And to be honest, that wasn't an entirely wasted effort, because I was honestly getting hazy on whether the character was alive or dead in this trilogy. Then I guess it's time to remind us there's still a war happening amongst these stars, so we get a quick shot of a rebel fleet jumping out of hyperspace. Looks like there's no Ryan Johnson space bombers this time around. What a shame, I really appreciated them. Followed by a first order battle fleet that looks like the special effects guys just said fuck it, and allowed the copy paste function to keep running as long as it fucking wanted. Although weirdly, these don't look like the big fat star destroyers used by the first order. These are original ones from the days of the Empire. Maybe the Empire itself is coming back. Or maybe JJ just said fuck it as well. Then it seems like C-3PO has turned into a Terminator for some reason. And why not, eh? He's still better than the Apple genius from Dark Fate, at least. Fix my fucking iPhone, you prick. Then we get to see Rey training in the forest by throwing her lightsaber around and catching it like Captain America's shield, and she looks mad about something like she's struggling to contain her negative emotions. What could this be hinting at, I wonder? Then there's a shot of Kylo Ren trying to look hard as he ignites his lightsaber, as if we'll just forget that he already got beat twice by a girl. Speaking of which, it looks like they're going at it again. Oh no, I'm on the edge of my seat, wondering whether our plucky hero can defeat the evil villain this time around. But who exactly is the evil villain, you might ask? The trailer leaves the biggest shock for last, as we bear witness to Rey dressed all in black, awkwardly igniting a red double-bladed lightsaber, and then it opens up like a Nokia flip phone to become like Darth Maul's dual saber. <laughs> what the fuck even is this? How could a weapon like this possibly be useful? I mean, what if you triggered the unfold function at the wrong moment? It could cut your fucking legs off. Jesus, what a disaster. 
This trailer, and I suspect the movie itself, is a prime example of what people do when they know they've fucked up big time, but they don't really understand why or how to fix it, so they just throw everything they have at the problem and hope something will stick, or they'll get a points for effort at least. Remember how long time fans were mad that their favourite characters were being killed off, dishonoured and generally abandoned by the new trilogy? Well, let's fix that by bringing back more OT characters. We need a new overarching antagonist, and everyone remembers the Emperor, so let's just resurrect him and throw him into the mix. Remember Anakin Skywalker's tragic fall to the dark side in the prequels? Well, let's tease the idea that Rey will go down the same path. The idea that their favourite good guy will fall into darkness, and Kylo Ren, the last Skywalker, will have to rise to defeat her. That'll get people excited, right? And it'll make us look smart into the bargain. No, it won't. Firstly, because nobody really likes or cares about Rey to begin with, and secondly, because there's nowhere for her to fall from. When you don't have a personality to begin with, turning good or evil doesn't have much meaning because nobody knows what your original intent even was. Anyway, the idea that the most Mary Sue of Mary Sues will actually turn evil and be defeated by Kylo Ren is about as plausible as a gender studies degree leading to a profitable career. A move like that would involve imagination, risk, skill and intelligence, and those aren't qualities our man JJ deals in. And what's with the obsessive nostalgia baiting? It's a nice idea in theory to tie the new Disney movies into the Skywalker saga, but unfortunately it invites unfavourable comparisons with the original movies, and really it does nothing except shine a giant spotlight on how the new movies utterly fail to measure up to them in every possible way. It also comes across as a lame and desperate attempt to tie this diabolical abortion of a story into a narrative that concluded more than 30 years ago and had absolutely no reason to keep going. Not to mention trying and failing to convince us that Rey has any stake, personal history or meaningful place in the Skywalker saga. As if all of this all of the conflicts and the epic adventures were part of some grand plan, all building up to this boring plank of wood. It's a bit like claiming the pyramids of Egypt were begun thousands of years ago so they could culminate in a tourist information kiosk selling overpriced postcards in 2019. Everyone with half a brain sees Rise of Skywalker for what it really is, a desperate cash grab with not an ounce of passion or originality to be found in its entire production. Oh well, bringing this back to my charming anecdote from the start of this video, at least my night out ended with a free taxi ride home, even if the driver didn't intend it that way. <laughs> but I suspect anyone who actually pays to see this disaster at the cinema will have both a wasted evening and wasted money to deal with. And I'm not about to do that when there's more worthy things I could spend it on. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Go away now.